Hello, this is a group meeting between cross group meeting between UX product um, uh, sex section and create where we're going to discuss uh, implementation plans for the uh, MR security updates. I don't even know what, what y'all are calling that thing. I keep getting confused because MR seems like it's an emerge request, but anyway. So that said, the intention of this call was to talk about what we can do in order to ensure that the entire vision gets built um, and that all the teams that could help and make that happen are uh, accounted for and represented more or less. I'm, I'm, I'm a little fearful that maybe only one small facet of it might get built and the rest of it won't. So I wanted to make sure that that's not the case. And in order to do that, I think it might take all of us to figure out how to make that happen. So that's why I did this. Um, that said, there was a call before this with a bunch of other teams and engineers. engineers. So uh, perhaps Michael, you could, or Connor, whoever, could give a readout on the results of that. And that might help drive the next steps for us here. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll happily provide a high-level overview, and then um, Andy or Connor, you were both in that meeting too. So if I glossed over anything, feel free to just add it in. So we met with the front-end engineering team from SAST and then create to sort of go over the design proposal for the UX vision. Um, and for those of you that don't know, I think most of you are well aware of it now, but it's introducing sort of up-leveling security and quality results in the changes tab of the merge request and making sure they're a lot more prominent and easier to manage and deal with. So, um, but the initial plan um, is for SAST to start the first iteration of that. And so that's gonna start with looking at code quality findings first, because that already exists in the diff today. So we're gonna start by working on transitioning the code quality designs to align with the designs that have been laid out in the UX theme. And that's going to help lay the foundation for then working on security findings. So after code quality has been implemented, we'll then look at introducing SAST findings, um, largely just inline findings themselves, um, following that exact same pattern. And then I think in parallel, while that's being done, we've asked our front end engineering team to be mindful that this pattern will go beyond just displaying inline findings in the changes tab, but also show all security results in the changes tab. So making sure they're mindful that what they're building for the initial inline finding aspect can translate to other security findings. Um, there are some aspects of the proposal that we know we want to, we're not going to include in the first iteration, but should probably be included altogether. So uh, highlighting security policies and policy violations around findings, we're not probably going to include that in the initial build out, but that's an important piece of this whole vision is making sure that teams can understand where those are at and what findings are impacted by policies. Um, another piece, I guess two other pieces that still need to be or will be deferred is commenting on findings themselves. So currently we have the option to comment on findings in the diff today, and I think we're going to lean on that functionality at first. But the thought process is that um, commenting on having conversations and threads directly on the findings themselves will help keep conversations in context and allow people to collaborate on how to resolve those issues. So there's a few open-ended questions around like what happens to comments on findings after the fact, like after the finding is merged, say you have a conversation on it and it gets merged, do we carry that on? Does it show up on the vulnerability report? Um, so there's a few questions around that that still need to be hashed out, but can become as a later iteration. Um, and then I think the other pieces, so there's two other pieces that we need to discuss and that's around filtering down the results. So you can choose to filter the inline findings or any finding change shown in the changes tab to only show what you want to. So if you wanted to filter it down to say, show only critical and high SAS findings, you could do that. That's something that I don't know if we're going to include in the first iteration, but it's a crucial piece to sort of helping users focus in on what they want or focus on and reduce some of the noise that might come from all these other results. And then the other portion is the sort of sidebar changes. So. Currently, we show just the files in the sidebar of the changes tab, and we want to surface automated findings in that sidebar as well. And that will serve as the main navigation point for identifying where those findings are in the changes themselves. All 
Anyone yeah, have any maybe, questions? Uh, Go ahead. Oh, just, just to kind of like button it up maybe. Um, like the, so we're trying to take like a slice of it that's pretty high confidence and that we like both from a UX and product and engineering perspective, um, that being putting the SaaS findings in there. Um, we figured out how to do that in the back end. I think we're almost there if not. Um, and then yeah, it's been engaged in the inline stuff for code quality before. So sort of taking that slice that we know is definitely worth it um, <clears throat> and doing it. Uh, and then I know Andy and Michael and some others had talked about like, should we release with just SAS there? I think we have a way we could do that. Um, but if we wanted to try to make it all consistent and have all those types there before we shipped anything, we could do that too. So there's still some choices that we can make. Um, I think I would, I would say that we currently favor the idea of shipping SAS or updating code quality to match the new design, fixing or shipping SAS that way um, and having static analysis just finish that. Um, and then adding later as like a separate thing. Um, so that meant it looks like Andy and Michael, you're nodding. Okay. Okay, so so basically, the SaaS side of things will get built, implemented first, and then we have a plan to have the rest built. And if that's the case, then who do we know who's doing that? Um, I have a, maybe a question to step back before we get into that topic. Okay. Um, I think the last kind of exposure I had to this was uh, the security team. Like we all reviewed uh, some of the designs and shared some thoughts and feedback. And then I think I had recalled from that point, you guys were doing some more testing and getting feedback from, from customers. And I, I hadn't heard since then. So did anything change? Like what were the outcomes? I feel like a, like almost like a UX readout and the findings from, from that. Maybe I'm just, I've missed a mention or something, but um, I think that would be, not that we have to cover it all today, but I think that would be interesting to to kind of review and kind of hear what are the priorities from the customer's standpoint and how they're, for example, uh, seeing that how we've validated that everything should be bundled under changes versus separate tabs or some of these decisions that we were discussing. Um, and then the, I think from there, it'll be easier to kind of kind of buy in on on some of the aspects that might touch each of our groups, personally speaking. Um, but yeah, this, for me, this is some work going on somewhere else, and I, I'm not fully up to speed on some mm -hmm. of the decisions being made, um, which which I think it looks cool. But I want to I want to understand, you know, how we came to some conclusions here. Yeah, no, I think that's important to cover. Um, I'm trying to think how to do this succinctly. So we've done a lot of testing on these designs, um, largely doing unwrap unmoderated solution validation using user testing.com testing with solely software developers we're not necessarily testing with security folks or anything here yet because the ultimate goal of what we're focusing on is helping to improve the management of security and quality results in the merge request and you know developers are the people that are mostly involved with that so um I guess the concept of integrating everything into the changes tab, that sort of stemmed from an idea from the create team um, through conversations with Andy and Kai. And the thought process there is that instead of having users come through and have to go say, look at all their code changes in the changes tab and then see all of their security results in say a different tab, um, putting everything into a single context so they just have basically one area to go through and look at everything they need to. Is sort of it's basically a thought to improve the efficiency while also helping them understand sort of where these findings relate to their code, since basically everything coming out of the merge request, um, anything that's done through the automated test or results is basically diffing against the changes. Yeah, and I, I fully get the yeah. kind of the the, the reasoning, and, and sure. I'm not not debating it. I think it's just I'm saying from my standpoint, I hadn't heard you know mm -hmm. like the results from all these findings and it, you know, that would be helpful from my perspective. Cause I think too, we, we are working on some changes on the security policy side to uh, better serve developers too. Um, so like we are working on auto, uh, auto merge or merge when pipeline succeeds and, yep. and how that coalesces, I guess, with security policies. So there are things that, you know, I think 
we we do want to you know collaborate cross stage so i think mm -hmm. and that i think it's probably i'm just not up to speed maybe on the outcomes and like hearing some developers saying yeah like oh this is so annoying that they're in multiple tabs like can we please put this in one tab that would help for me to know that um personally yeah yeah and so I think we didn't do a great job at sharing out the results of our solution validation in the main issue yet, um, but I can quickly share my screen. There, we did have our US researcher go through and analyze the last round of solution validation, and he did provide some high-level insights from that. So that's within the solution validation issue that's linked off of the main uh, okay. that's related to it. But there is a comment down here from Michael Oliver. And so he had sort of four main insights that he saw come out of um, the round of solution validation. One of which is that participants really liked sort of the interaction around security policies and being able to get that information within the merge request. Um, that's something that doesn't really exist today. So helping users connect that dots was really beneficial. 100% on that one. I've heard that as well. Yep. Nice. Uh, we did see there were some like usability issues around requesting help specifically on vulnerabilities. Um, Cause currently today, the way we've set up the design is to not introduce any new functionality. So we're leveraging just sort of the option to comment on findings themselves as a way to sort of collaborate on them. That process was a little bit difficult for some users, but I think that's just something that exists in the merge request experience today. The large hangup was like users would comment, but they weren't sure whether they should start a review or add a comment now. Um, so that's something that I think isn't a blocker for this, but an area where we possibly could improve the experience. We did ask all participants to like, what was their perception of seeing security results or any findings in context of the changes? And everyone was really successful at being able to navigate them and like work through them. But three of the fifth, or I guess he reviewed 11 participants so far, and three of them did say that they would prefer to see it in a separate tab, but none of them had issues using it in the changes tab itself. And a lot of the users, again, did seem to like the fact that changes or the findings were presented directly in context of their code. Um, and then the last uh, insight that he had pulled out is that there was a little bit of confusion around sort of, there were multiple ways to essentially filter down the results. In the original design concept, we had a way to filter. So you could like filter down to only show like higher medium severity findings. But then there was also a separate mechanism for hiding inline findings altogether. And those two different um, ways of sort of hiding and showing content ended up being a little bit confusing for users. So we simplified the concept down to only rely on filters. And then also um, we minimized the visual impact of findings too. So originally the design concept showed these cards always in, in view, and we thought that could actually produce a lot of noise for users. So we minimize the impact by allowing them to be collapsed down. And I think we actually decided that this is going to be the default state is any inline findings will be sort of indicated by an icon. And then they could expand them out in content or directly in line in a file. So that hopefully helps reduce sort of the visual impact and noise that we were seeing from users. Got it. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for talking through those high level. I can I can get caught up on that issue as well. And and go deeper. I don't want to sidetrack us too much, but it, help, it does help to hear some of the, the um, kind of top level insights that came out of the study. Yeah, and I, of course. Yeah, violations. I, I know going into what you're asking, Justin, I think anything related to these policy violations and how they um, are exposed, I think is something that our team would, would really be interested in, in solving. Um, but, you know, as a as a function of our roadmap planning, like we want to see kind of where, where it falls in the, in the priority list, but um, that would be definitely interesting for us to take on. Okay. So getting back to the plan, um, I want to, again, make sure that we do have something in place. Um, another aspect I believe that came out of the previous meeting was that uh, I think a SAS front end dev is going to put together a, an engineering breakdown of how we can build this from start to finish. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Yannick, we'll Yannick. Do oh, go ahead, Connor. No, we said the same thing at the same time. Yannick is, is going to start on that and then tag us in for review. Um, okay. And for those who don't know, Michael's gone after today. So Andy will be stepping in uh, mm -hmm. to help uh, finalize on the UX side. Yeah, and, and hopefully that'll be light because uh, 
I think Michael's put a ton of work to get prepped for this month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully this will be way. mainly build and, and, and any uh, UX will just be collaborative as engineering progresses. Um, but with that said, so if, if someone's, we're putting a plan together, it's mainly going to be from the SaaS front end dev. Does that imply that SaaS is going to build this whole thing? Do we need to get collaboration from other teams? I guess is ultimately what I'm asking. Um, so I think what Yannick is working on is, is a plan that gets us up to the point of having SaaS findings. So code quality needs to get migrated to the new display and then SaaS would be added. Um, and that's as far as he's going to take the planning the, for the at least this step. Um, then there's stuff that we could do to add more result types, like I could add secret detection. Um, I could add IAC. IAC actually is SAS, so it comes for free. Um, and that covers everything from my slide. Um, but then we don't have an owner at this point for, I think there's there's like cross cutting things like the policy violations. I mean that would be Grant's group. I think um, uh, we don't have other there are other cross cutting kind of concerns that would probably land more with with threat insights. Like if we want to get that commenting thing going or somehow change the volume workflow, and then there's the other result types, which I don't know if those would land with other secure teams like the like dynamic or composition analysis. Um, probably not dynamic because I don't think you have front end edge anymore. Uh, Yep. Okay. Um, so maybe there the, 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 the those kind of different angles to, to take going forward. Um, like the, the result types that have to get implemented and then like the different parts of the UI that we're sort of bringing out of the first iteration. I had a, a question. Does, does dynamic analysis results, do they, do they make as much sense to be like in line? Like our developers getting those results and taking action in the EMRs. I feel like that's kind of like a separate workflow in a way. I mean, I think that it depends. I mean, if in general, no, it's not, you wouldn't expect to do that, but we could, I mean, there could be things like specific JavaScript files that we can pinpoint. Uh, that's where, you know, the function came from or that uh, it wasn't validated correctly or something like that. So I think that it could uh, be shown on here. It just wouldn't be shown necessarily like in line in the code there. Yeah. Okay. Like there's a different section. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And may maybe Derek, I'm not sure that I understood the question as I asked, like for inline findings, there's not going to be as many, but would you say that people would be trying to address best findings in the MR? I'm actually not sure how often people run in the MR versus only on the default branch or scheduled or on demand. Do you have a sense to that? It depends on it depends on what branch it's on. If it's if it's a feature branch that's still under development, um, I don't think that I don't think that they're going to be running DAS too much with that. Um, if it's if it's a mostly what I've seen is people running Dast on MRs that are being merged back into their main branch once feature development is done. So I don't know. Uh, on demand still has a lot less usage than. Um, in uh, pipeline scans. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, but the, so they are run in MRs. It's just likely just on the main, when the target is the main branch. But but ultimately, regardless of that, there is a design in place to handle non in line findings. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, Get, let's get back to the, we have nine minutes before the half hour. Um, SAS has a plan. What's left after that that we need to have a plan for? I mean, I'll, I'll jump in to, to speak for the policy violations aspect. I think it's just a matter of like, how important is that um, compared to some of our other priorities? 
Um, but I think that's, that's something that we can explore. Um, like how, I mean, that doesn't exist today at all. So I think there's, there would have to be some discovery on that. Uh, so I, don't, I couldn't tell you what, what the plan is, but I can plan a plan to, uh, okay. to create a plan. That's a good Creed. step. I mean, there's enough time, at least while SAST is building their side of it, uh, to actually put a formalized plan in place. But I want to make sure that we're at least planning to plan. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I should know this. Uh, the this was a, the, the designs were driven by an OKR. I think implementation there. I thought there was going to be an OKR, but I have not checked. Um, we would probably, if there were one, we would like, we would cover it by us doing static analysis findings. Uh, but I guess I'm wondering, like, if if, if there's like a particular uh, like leadership level, like we have to get the full thing done thing, or if it's more like we just don't, don't want to drop it. I haven't seen anything specifically at the leadership level beyond what spawned this effort to begin with. What we're ultimately trying to push for is not to do what we always do, which is here's an MVC and then we forget about it for a year. And then we hear everything from SUS, you know, surveys that thanks for building half a feature. Are you ever going to finish anything? So we're trying to stop doing that, you know, and uh, if we can finally build this whole thing, we think that that, I mean, MRs are huge. That page is huge for multiple reasons, but it's also huge because we're finally adding a robust, secure uh, view, you know, point of view to that page. So I think if we can build this thing completely, consecutively, that's going to pretty seriously affect SUS scores, for instance. So I think from our perspective, yeah. regardless of, I mean, we have to balance the fiscal year 24 agenda, of course, um, but you know, we also need to do things that we think is best that's in line with that. And I think this is still in line with those goals. Yeah, totally. Just, just, just wanted to know if it was like a what level of pressure there was behind it. Um, I think we'll like. I mean, the 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 idea of triaging a SAS finding today is like super awful. Um, the like trying to bounce between pages. So, like, definitely, I think we'll. We I hope we have a measurable impact just with the first iteration too. Um, I guess. We would need to, policy evaluations probably go to grant, maybe as a backlog item to refine with your, well, I don't know, I guess it's already designed, um, but maybe to harmonize with your designs. Well, I mean, um, we we need to refine what yeah. how we implement this and and then, yeah, how we would prioritize it. Um, there's the other scanner types. There's, well, we'll, we'll probably have to change some of the MR, let's make a tailored change to the MR widget also as part of this first iteration, um, just to kind of mention that. Um, but any further changes to the MR widget would um, need to loop in Becca on a, your team. Um, I'm trying to list off items, but I, I'm not trying to take up all the space in the room. Uh, what else do we not have owners for filtering? Like there's like the, the, the general advance of the of the screen there too. It sounds like create is not gonna have time because AI all the things. Um, so someone, which could be me, but might not be me, um, would need to like push that once we get past the, Mm -hmm. Once we can, once we're showing SAS in the findings, that's like definitely us. But then there's a, there's there's other there's other parts of the, the experience that we that we cut off to. Um, yeah, filtering is definitely a big question mark right now because like definitely it applies to SAS. It is a part of the code review process, but like vulnerability triage is sort of threat insights too, so it could fall into a couple realms. Not sure if it probably makes sense for security to work on that some versus code review, since largely the up leveling and filtering has to do with automated test results. But yeah, whether that's SAS or another team to be determined. Lana, well, do you have any sense of how, I mean, I know explaining this vulnerability is taking up a lot of dev time, but. 
so I guess two questions. Connor, when do you think the filtering mechanism will need to get worked on? And then Alana, perhaps it's later. Do you think Threat Insights would have scope to take on some of that work? Um, I think we would have to make sure that the, the requirements are really well defined. Um, right now, it's just like we're trying to hold steady with what we have planned with the roadmap and what we're trying to do for AI. So I'm going to say maybe. I'm not going to say no, but I'm not going to say yes. It's, we seem just like so jammed, packed with everything going on. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Uh, I don't. It's up to you guys. I don't. I don't think security policies is 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 raising our hand for this one, but it seems like a very much a create kind of requirement. Like this is the developer persona. I get that they are busy with AI, and so maybe there's some just, you know, we just we just agree to collaborate on it. But um, I don't know. I, the research has been done around the developer persona. There's been no security personas involved in this study so far, and um, yeah, it seems to to fit best in that in that realm. Personally speaking, not I mean, we can be a team player. We just have to like I think prioritize against some of the like core requirements that are necessary to make security scanning and the security workflows even useful um, for some customers. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to try to get create to take on some of this work. I totally agree with you. I mean, everything we're doing essentially is create oriented. Um, I think we're going to fall into the perspective of, well, if no one has time, who's going to finally pick it up and just do it? That's I'm afraid of that happening, and then we just say, "Oh well, I guess no one," and then we forget about it. I, have, I don't, I have another, I don't want to lose yeah. the momentum. I have another weird idea. I don't know if it's weird or not, but it uh, seems like foundations just like finish some pretty big lift on a very central UX related navigation. Navig yeah, um, and then I don't know, like we use filters across a lot of the product. Um, maybe there's some unified filtering capability that would make sense here. Yeah. The filtering concept too, for just a little context is very tied to the work Becca has been doing around filtering. So maybe there's some synergies there too. That was kind of why I was talking to Alana about it. Or oh, why I brought Alana so up. That, yeah. Um, on our roadmap, we are looking at filters for the dependency list and um, the vulnerability report and making those more cohesive, which is why Becca has been doing that solution validation. So maybe I could, if the timing, if the timing makes sense and we have the clear requirements and this is how we are going to proceed, maybe we could group that, those things together. So it's like a quarter full of filters. Right. Okay. Well, we're about at time. I think this is good to get the ball rolling. We, of course, aren't done. We didn't come to any specific conclusions. Um, I'm going to try and keep this in, in front of mind. Probably the simplest way is through each of our milestone planning issue discussions that we have. Um, in the meantime, if you all can keep it in front of mind and, and continue to get creative on how we can do it ourselves, pull in other people to help, whatever we got to do. Um, I think this is super important but everything's super important. So that makes it difficult to lean one way or the other. Uh, I guess it's just try not to forget about it. And uh, I would love for Michael to come back from his parental leave and see that it's all built. That would be magical. That would be a great uh, gift, right? So How long is your way. parental leave, Michael? <laughs> Follow up, can you extend it? Yes. <laughs> one year parental leave, that sounds good to me. There you go. As long as those paychecks keep coming. Now we're talking. Four months per kid, so that might be eight months for you. Hey, yeah. There you <laughs> there go. There you go. Good math. <laughs> Probably need it, to be honest. You're going to need more than that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, concretely, I, I don't know if I'll... I'm wary of signing up for this, but um, uh, I think within static analysis, we'll probably try to take the UX theme and then break it down to the specific iteration in context of the UX plan. So you, that might be an opportunity to, to, to stub out issues, throw them to your groups um, for like 
annotate security findings, uh, policy relations in the findings or something. Like just take those items and at least have them on a backlog um, associated back to the theme. Um, that might be a way to not forget about it. If you want to take that on, I'm happy to create an issue on my end, but if you're going to do it, then I'll, I'll wait and then update from there. We'll see. I will try. And when I say okay. I will try, uh, I guess my observed success rate is less than 100%, but um, when I say I will do it, it's higher. I said I will try. Understood. <laughs> all right. Regardless, thank you all for participating in this conversation and uh, being willing to help. And I look forward to uh, completing this and releasing it to the world. Thank right, you. Great. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Cheers. everyone. Bye now.